Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe. maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to this week's episode of the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is a special short episode where I'm just going to go over uh, what's happened the past couple weeks with some prep school visits and kind of go over a few topics that I keep getting um, questions on and just want to raise those right now. So it is the week of July 10th and I just got back from a jaunt of visiting six prep schools. Why do I want to share this with you? Just to give you a rundown on like why it's so important to visit these places in person because each one I visited have had a different shape and size, personality, culture, coach, academic structure, um, background. So you got to know all these prep schools are not created equal. I started in Pennsylvania, visited Kiskey School. My good friend, Coach Damian Williams, sent a lot of kids there throughout the years. It's an all boys school, beautiful campus. Um, and, you know, I think five of my clients have chosen to go there next year. So, um, I have a great relationship with that school. I think it's a real neat option just to the east of Pittsburgh. From there, went up to Andrews Osborne, um, met the new coach, Coach Eli Gore. Great situation there. They're getting a new head of school. They're trying to get on the scene and make a big push. This cute little town of Willoughby, Ohio that kids can walk to. Um, been around since 1910. Nice option near Cleveland. 40 minutes away, I went to Western Reserve, where I've sent a lot of kids in the past, boys and girls, and got a chance to see that campus again. By the way, my father was on this trip with me, Big Mike, the original uh, prep athletics, and I love showing him these different prep schools so he can get these perspectives. Some of these schools I've already seen. Some of them my first time visiting, but I've been to Western Reserve before. Beautiful New England prep school type setting in Hudson, Ohio, which is a cute little town. Um, they're doing things the right way as a team. They're trying to become nationally prominent, and I uh, got to meet Coach Sean White there. Um, and, and get to hear his story. From there, we drove over to La Lumiere, which um, has won a you know, high school national championship. Um, a lot of big-time pros have gone there. It's outside Chicago um, in LaPorte, Indiana, and they'll be taking a couple of my clients next year from overseas. Got to meet Coach Pat Holmes and see their setup. Really cool gym they got. A really cool philosophy, um, so I enjoyed meeting them. And then the next day, I visited Link Your Prep, in Branson, Missouri, they started a unique way um, with Coach Adam Doines and how they kind of started their program and did it slowly and did it the right way. They're at a beautiful location on a river at a, at a summer camp. That's the most unbelievable summer camp I've ever seen. Link Year actually takes over the, the nine months of summer camp is not in session. So really like what's going on there. They've put out a lot of big-time players throughout the years and um, it could be a good fit for somebody. And then finally stopped back into Sunrise Christian. Um, I've been there before. Actually, my first visit there was the day after Chris Jenkins, who I helped coach at Gonzaga, hit that game-winning shot for Villanova. So my whole drive there, I just listen to Sports Talk Radio, hear people talk about the Villanova win over North Carolina um, in the NCAA championship game. So that's the last time I was at Sunrise. But good to see it again with Kyle Linstead back taking over after um, he did a little stint as a D1 assistant coach. And uh, just, you know, all these schools are different from each other. So that's where I help families kind of navigate this world and kind of tell them the pros and cons of each place and what the personality is. So that was a quick recap of my quick uh, road trip from the East Coast back to Colorado. Let's get into some questions. Um, one family, actually multiple families last year asked me, should they be promoting their postgrad on social media? Should they be reaching out to college coaches or should the prep school coach handle that all themselves? And my answer to that is go ahead and self promote yourself, right? Yes. A college coach or a prep school coach is going to help you get placed, but it never hurts to spread that net wider. So if you're a kid or a parent and you want to reach out to college coaches, if you want to put highlights on social media, go for it. If you're reaching out to college coaches, I would make sure you're communicating with your prep school coach just to make sure you guys aren't crossing wires and doing the same thing twice, but absolutely you can self-promote. I also this year had kids who were not happy with their options that the prep school coach presented them. Mind you, if you're a West Coast kid going to a prep school in the East Coast, there's gonna be more East Coast options available for you. Sure, that coach can coach or call, a West Coast college, 
but he might not have a relationship where this East Coast prep school is going to have more relationships with East, you know, coach East Coast colleges. That's a mouthful. But, you know, if you wanted to hire a college consultant to help you find something more in your region, you can absolutely do that. I'm working now with a company. Um, I'll probably have one of their members on the podcast soon, but that is a way to facilitate your recruitment. Now, these coaches have to place you in a spot. You just might not like that. Not might not like that spot. So what do you do? You can take it or you can keep searching on your own. It's really up to the family and what your level level of satisfaction is with what your prep school coach presented you. But East Coast schools are going to have more East Coast options. Midwest schools are going to have more Midwest options. Wasatch out in Utah, they can send send kids anywhere. But guess what? Those regional schools are going to have a chance to see them more often. So, yes, you can supplement what a prep school coach is doing. I would just make sure the communication is there. Second question. Now, we're going to get more into this in a future podcast, but offers. There are all types of offers out there that kids get different times of their high school career and prep school career. There are different types of offers. I I don't understand it good enough to explain it now, which is why I'm going to get an expert on, whether it's a prep school coach or a college coach, but more to come on offers, but they are not all created equal. Okay, a recent podcast came out from Coach Jamie and Christian on his podcast called Last Call with Jamie and Christian, and it came out on July 12th about analytics. Now, it went into real big depth uh, from a guy in the NBA and a guy, a head coach at Caltech, about some of the analytics that teams are using now to evaluate their players and include, in, improve uh, the way they shoot, where high percentage shots are. I thought it was fascinating. It gets very in the weeds, and it's pretty much looking in the future. Actually, some of the stuff is here now, but I was curious trying to figure out um, how much of that applies to high school and prep school kids, and you can determine in that yourself. But great episode on analytics um, on the last call at Jamie and Christian podcast. So recommendation there. Um, another thing I get a lot of questions on that I want to touch on real quick. And we've got a separate podcast uh, highlight with Coach Raphael Chilius from South Kent. And it's about should you be on a second team and get more reps? Or should you be on a first team and get less reps and sit the bench but be on the first team? I get this question a lot because a lot of teams now have second teams and, you know, Kids have to work with the coach and figure out what's right for them. I've got two uh, two ideas on this. One, if you're on the main team not playing as many minutes, you're still getting better playing against better players. You're seeing how those games act uh, or play out. You get to hear the coach in that situation, maybe the main prep school coach. There's benefits to that, but there's always benefits to getting more reps in. If you're on the second team and you actually get to play and get reps and minutes, there's benefits to that as well. So really it comes down to what you want talk to your coach. Some people are really turned off by second teams. But what I say is usually every player in the program during the open gym period usually is all together in front of the college coaches through the whole fall, doing weightlifting together, doing open runs together, conditioning. It's only when the season starts do some of these teams break off. And they still might practice together. It's just the second team coach will coach the second team during games. And no one likes to call them second teams. They've got fancy names like Power Five, Varsity B, red, blue, green, just their second teams. They might talk and give them different names. It doesn't matter, right? Ask them when you're talking to schools, prep schools specifically, have you placed kids on your second team? Can I talk to one to find out how their experience was? And then you can learn more. But it depends on each kid and each family and what they want on whether that's a good option or not, okay? Last thing I want to talk about is what is your why, right? Almost every kid I talk to wants to play D1. Why? Why? Really dig into it. Do the Socratic method and keep asking yourself. I think about my history and why I wanted to play D1. It's because five members of my family before me played D1. So I just assumed it was my God-given right to play D1. It's my dad, my two uncles, my two cousins. They all played it, so I was going to be the next heights in line to do it. Why? Well, they all did it. Why? Well, it's a scholarship. Why? Um, I think it's the right thing to do. So that's kind of what I want you guys to think about is why do you want D1 versus the right fit? Okay. What are you looking for? And dig down, dig deep. I think if I would have dug deep, I probably wouldn't have been as hell bent on D1. If I just asked questions and figured out like maybe there's a better fit for me that's not D1. 
I've said it before, I'll say it again. I have no regrets of my D1 experience. It was not normal, but um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I wouldn't trade the friends, the experiences I had. But now knowing what I know, I'm just challenging the parents and the kids on why you want to go D1 so bad. Okay, so that was this brief episode. Um, just wanted to check in real quick. Make sure you guys have a fun summer. Subscribe on YouTube if you got the chance. Um, all this stuff goes on there and a couple bonus um, postings, but I appreciate you guys tuning in. Any questions you have, feel free to reach out to me. My information is on the Prep Athletics website, and we will talk again soon. Take care.